I think the New School um, and the Dramatic Workshop have been historically over time an experiment in community building and um, of, again, thinking outside the box. So it wasn't a space, the Dramatic Workshop particularly was not a space for the intellectual or it was really a space to invite people in um, to engage creatively in political questions and to wrestle with them in the space of, in a theater space, which is again something that theater particularly can do. Now, I've always known about the legacy of the Dramatic Workshop um, and been very, again, I feel like provoked and um, intrigued and uh, instigated by their, in, their, their, the social justice part of, of what the Dramatic Workshop stood for, but also um, by the group theater. They connect, and they connect through the lens of Stella Adler. So the Dramatic Workshop began, uh, Piscatter and his wife, Maria Leigh Piscatter, come to the United States um, fleeing uh, Nazi Germany um, in 1939. The Dramatic Workshop begins in 1940 and it ends during the Red Scare in 1951. But it was this, this incredible meeting place of creative minds and intellects who did not fit the regular academic box. Maria Leigh Piscator was a dancer and choreographer who met Erwin Piscator in Salzburg after his escape to Paris from Stalin's Soviet Union. They were married in 1937 and arrived in New York in 1939 and opened the dramatic workshop at the New School. Maria Leigh Piscator, who was Piscator's wife, was seminal to the 40 productions that he did at the New School. She was a dancer, she was a gymnast, um, but seems to be the kind of like thread. He apparently wasn't a great people person, she was, and was somebody who is uh, part of the administrative backbone of um, that uh, institution. After the closing of the workshop in 1951 and Piscator's forced departure to West Germany under the threat of McCarthyism, Maria Leigh chose to stay in the United States. At least 100 letters were exchanged between Piscator and his Maria Lane until his death in 1966. The word Schul, standing for the new school, is mentioned frequently in these letters. Stella Adler was on the faculty of the Dramatic Workshop from 1940 to 1947. She founded her own studio in 1949, which still trains actors today. Stella Adler, who's there anchoring the acting program, and her students are Marlon Brando, Harry Belafonte, uh, Elaine Stritch, and it can go on from there. She has her, now Piscator, of course, is working in his political theater arena. He's very much about epic theater and influenced by Brecht, wanting to step outside of the genre of realism. Stella, it seems to me, has her own circuitous way of just doing exactly what she wanted to do. She felt, I think, that even in a genre where the actor is in a political space, that authenticity was still of, an, of the essence. Stella used to say, no curtain in New York goes up without an Adler behind it. We were all raised backstage. My father didn't give me a moment's peace. If we were walking in the street, he'd point someone out and say, look at her, look at the way she walks, look at him, watch the way he uses his hands, observe, 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 he'd tell us. That's why you become an actor. Stella was incredibly important 
not only because she taught at the dramatic workshop then later from 1940 until she began her own studio in 1949, but she pushes back um, against this notion of um, effective memory and uh, which Lee Strasberg, kind of patriarchal male way of saying no, we are in the genre of realism, we, um, you can only access your own life and to bring to the fore authentic reality, you have to keep coming back to your own trauma again and again. Stella would have none of it. Um, she uh, came out of the Yiddish theater tr tradition, but she has her own sort of sense of um, personal integrity as, as a creative artist. She evolves her practice, which has to do with taking the actor into the space of being, of anthropology. So the actor as researcher, the actor really discovering and um, uh, uh, uncovering the given circumstances of a play. So, you know, maybe it's 50% imagination and Im immediate presence, but there's a whole component also of um, your responsibility as an artist to address the playwright's text and go further um, in terms of researching the who, what, when, where, and why. Judith Molina was a student of Erwin Piscator at the Dramatic Workshop from 1945. Judith Molina came to the New School as an 18-year-old on a scholarship with no money. She came because her mom had heard of Piscator and wanted to be an actress, but of course didn't choose that route um, as a refugee to the United States. And Molina comes as an actress, and suddenly she's intrigued by all of these other aspects of theater, and she decides she wants to take directing classes as well. Piscator gives her the cold shoulder um, when she goes to his office and says, you know, stick with acting. Women have no follow through. And she says she pulled the female trick of having uh, crying crocodile tears, and he allowed her into not only the directing uh, classes, but she also took other kinds of classes, uh, um, producing and design. She goes on in her own practice and found something called the Living Theater with Julian Beck. Again, a political theater movement. It arises in the 60s, but it becomes a space of protest, a place where, um, again, in the seminal moment of the anti-war movement, um, we're out on the streets um, uh, um, in a very uh, evocative and important way. Um, there are stories about Judith Molina also of being arrested for other political actions. Um, there's an amazing story about her post-World War II being arrested with Dorothy Day, um, also a, a religious, uh, um, spiritual uh, thinker and philosopher, um, but a political activist. And they were protesting um, having to respond to air raid sirens. So in, during the Cold War, apparently, um, there were, t there were t uh, tests that would happen and the city would blare a siren and everyone had to get to an air raid shelter. They were against this, both the proliferation of nuclear weapons and this, this notion that um, um, they were going to fall in step um, with the government and they refused to answer um, these air raid sirens. And it, Lots of women um, were arrested. They were held a few blocks away at Jefferson Market Library. And there's a famous story about how Judith Molina was a very, you know, young, beautiful girl being arrested at the same time with all these kind of street lowlifes um, who, who uh, Dorothy Day was concerned that she might get hurt and insisted that they share a cell uh, for a period of time where she could be under, Molina could be under her protection. Before her death in 2015, Melina came back to her roots. She acted with Lang College students in operetta. Melina returns to the New School um, right at the end of her life and actually does a production um, with Zishan Urgalu, who is my colleague, um, uh, the other person at, uh, who's full-time in theater at Lang. And, um, so it's kind of an amazing full circle where she comes back as a performer um, in a play at La Mama with Lang students. 
And even right before her death in 2015, um, she was gracious enough to come back and actually give a talk about her process and her work. So again, three women um, who may not have quite uh, the same razzle-dazzle as uh, Marlon Brando or Tennessee Williams or even Edwin Piscator, I think were central to the dramatic workshop and to its legacy, its legacy of the students that went forward um, who were so changed after being here at the New School. We imagine the New School to be a really progressive, radical institution. And I think in many regards it is, if you look at the contemporary landscape of higher education. And for an institution of this sort to have undiscovered, unacknowledged women at its roots and at its foundations is an amazing admission. If we are, of all the institutions in the world, if we cannot acknowledge them and honor them and celebrate them, that says a lot about the contemporary position of women. Um, so the new school should be a leader in, in this and not a follower. And I think that will speak a lot to our, our sister institutions, <laughs> both in New York City and in, in the general landscape of higher education. Mm -hmm.